should you buy two monitors? This is a great question, and one that's not quite as easy to answer as you might think. It gives you a barrel load of space to work with, it makes multitasking better than ever, and it also allows you to mix and match your monitors to give you the exact specifications that you need for all of your applications and video games to look their best. But there are some significant drawbacks, and I think that when you're spending this much money on a computer setup, you probably want to know what they are. So should you get multiple monitors, or is there a better option out there? But first, a message from our pre-roll sponsor, NVIDIA and ASUS ROG, and their epic RTX and GTX graphics cards. High frame rate gaming not only brings lower latency, smoother animations, and better visibility, but it can bring a genuine advantage over your competition, as quicker reaction times only increases the chances of making that game-winning strike. You can pick up an NVIDIA Frames Win Games graphics card, starting with a mighty GTX 1660 Super, and you can learn a little bit more about this and start your high frame rate journey with the links down below. Setting up two monitors is incredibly simple, but it does require a fair chunk of space available on your desk. Here I'm using two thin bezeled HP gaming displays, and these were sent out for a different sponsored video, but you can use any two monitors that you like, regardless of the brand, size, or resolution. As you'll be needing two power cords and then two for display, do make sure that you do actually have the spare ports available both on your wall and your computer before making this investment. If you use the stands that come in the box, in most monitors cases they should be enough, but if your monitors allow it, you can grab a separate wall clamp or a multi-monitor stand and this will make your setup look a whole lot cleaner, give it a more premium look, and in some cases it can make it a lot easier to make adjustments as well. Once you're all set up and you've made it into the desktop, you're likely going to need to tweak a few different settings in the display manager, such as choosing a primary monitor that you want all of your windows to open on first, arrange your monitors so that they're actually displayed in the correct order, and then ensure each screen is running at its maximum refresh rate and resolution. You can also alter the scaling of each screen, so that windows are the right sizes for your personal preferences, and everything just gets displayed properly. Once you're here, you'll now notice that you just have so much more screen real estate for all of these wonderful things for you to do. You can maybe grab a window, and you can make it much bigger, you can move it across to the other screen, and you can be working on one while playing on the other. The world is pretty much your oyster at this stage. Basic navigation should be flawless if both screens are the same size and resolution, but you might find that your mouse can sometimes get a bit stuck at some of the borders when mixing and matching, but you can easily adjust this. It's just a case of drilling it into muscle memory. A very useful hotkey to remember is Windows, Shift, and then arrow left or arrow right as this will move the entire window from one screen to the other, and is an absolute godsend at times. Some applications will even have multi-screen modes, with programs like DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Lightroom filling your second screen with some really useful information and tools that make your workflow far, far easier. Gaming also gets a whole lot better with multiple displays, as now you can be playing on one whilst having a video on the other, or maybe monitoring your PC and game chat in the background whilst racking up those knockdowns in Apex. I rocked two displays for around about four or five years, especially whilst at university, and the thing that I really loved about it was that I could have two different displays that would do different things. So I'd have one that was great for productivity with a higher resolution and a slower refresh rate but better image quality, but then I'd have a super fast gaming display on the other, so it didn't matter whether I was playing a game or doing work, I'd always have an appropriate display for what I was trying to achieve. Do remember, however, that you're going to need to set the primary display in Windows so that the game opens on the correct screen, and that you're going to have to set the game to borderless window mode, as this is what's going to allow it to flick between monitors without minimizing the game. Something that is a little bit of a shame, though, is the fact that when you're using multiple displays, gaming across two of them at the same time isn't really something you can do. Sure, you can always drag your window right across the displays or maybe set a custom resolution and run it full screen across both, but unless you're using three displays, the middle point is always going to be right where the bezels are, which is essentially unusable for pretty much every game that I've tested. Not only this, but when you're using multiple displays, you sort of notice that you do have to stretch a little bit with your torso, it's almost like an exercise at the moment, but build this up over a day, a week, a month, and you can start to notice a little bit of strain appearing. So you can remedy this by having a wide desk with plenty of space and proper posture, 
but it's never gonna be quite as comfortable in my experience as using a single display right in the middle. So these are the drawbacks then, but what can we do about it? Well, it was actually the manufacturers that came up with an alternative solution to multiple monitors that is becoming increasingly popular, and it is very simple. Just get a bigger display. Tracking down a 32 inch or larger screen really isn't that difficult these days. And thanks to 4K resolution, even a 40 inch plus monitor can still look sharp enough for use in any application or game. Now I've tested quite a few, and while I do find them a bit too tall for my personal liking, they clearly have a huge following for the whole host of different tasks that you can do on them. I instead prefer an ultra wide display, which is usually very similar in size to a 27 inch monitor, but they've made it wider and it's just a lot longer. And the benefits of this are very obvious. You're only going to need a single set of cables. They're gonna take up less space on your desk. And of course, you don't need to calibrate two monitors to get them matching. And they come in two different flavors. You've got ultra wide, and I'm not making this up. You now have super ultra wide. What's next? Hyper ultra wide, crazy ultra wide, big. <laughs> Ultra wide. Standard ultra wide displays are around about one and a half monitors width, whereas a super ultra wide will actually replicate two full 16 by nine screens. And the Samsung one I tested recently, for instance, was absolutely gigantic, 49 inches across, it was silly. Yet it actually worked a treat for productivity thanks to that perfect 50-50 window split and was pretty much unlike anything else I'd ever really used before but more normal ultrawides are much more of a jack of all trades affair. And it's what I personally lean towards thanks to their flexibility, because they're great for single screen applications thanks to the little extra pixel real estate that you get, but without going far too big. And you can also still window applications straight down the middle for having two things on screen at the same time. But then most importantly, you can still use it for full screen applications, especially gaming. And I think that this is really what should make up your mind when you're looking at getting a new monitor or monitors. If you're starting from scratch, then the flexibility is all yours. You could get two of the same monitors, you could mix and match with one that's good for gaming, let's say, one that's great for productivity or whatever take your fancy, or you could get an ultra wide and then just make the most of having one screen that does everything. If you already have a monitor, I understand that is perhaps a little bit more difficult because if you get a new monitor, you're gonna have to replace it or you could just get another monitor of the same and have it side by side. So this is obviously gonna factor into your decision a lot, but for the sake of argument, I'm gonna pretend that you don't have one or at least you don't have one you wanna keep. So then, what's more important to you? A bigger screen that's super comfortable to use or being able to multitask to the max? It's quite a deep question, as there are plenty of reasons to go for either. If you're any sort of a developer or a game streamer, for instance, then two monitors are certainly a no-brainer. But the way that you use your PC can guarantee will change depending on your approach. Having two monitors will see you flick about between applications like some sort of ninja wizard, whereas having a larger screen will aid your focus and will offer a far more immersive world of gaming glory. There's no right or wrong answer, but for me, it's the ultra-wide life that floats my boat thanks to my video editing and gaming needs. And like I seem to say a lot on this channel, it is all about buying what's right for your personal needs, as there's no point buying multiple monitors and then I'm going into no signal mode if you're not going to make use of two screens. If you're just going to mainly play a lot of games and you don't want to be doing stuff in the background, then just get a larger display. But likewise, if you know you're going to use two screens at the same time, then get two screens. Just make sure you have the space on your desk. Let me know down in the comment section below what you go for in your setup, what makes more sense for you, what would you recommend, give other people some advice. It's a great place to share ideas. And uh, if you are in the market for a new monitor, I'll leave some links down below to some of my favorites. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to like the video, smash that subscribe button. And of course, don't forget to check out our sponsors, Asus and Nvidia, and the Frames Win Games graphics cards. If you're playing multiplayer, then frames win games, and getting the fastest graphics card is oh so important. Asus sell the 1660 Super from £209, bringing high refresh rate 1080p gaming to the masses. Find the graphics card that's right for you, down all the links below, and start winning your journey today. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, I'll see you in the next one.